The Soup Spoon! All right, so we're, we've got one uh, loaf of Velveeta cubed up here by our sous chef, Jack. Now he's going to put that whole loaf of Velveeta into a uh, pan. And we're going to uh, take that over to the stove and start melting it. And what we're going to do is we're going to add cream of mushroom soup. We don't know how much. I'm going to guess it's probably about four cans, but maybe as much as six. But we're going to um, add some cream of mushroom soup. So let's go get that prepped. Now we've got three. Here comes the fourth can of cream of mushroom soup. And we'll see how that's working. What we're going to do is we're going to transfer this to our stove top and start melting. All right, so this is what it should look like when the uh, Velveeta and the cream of mushroom soup. Now we've got how many cans? Six? Six cans in there. So go ahead and show them how the consistency. Yes, like that. Okay, so now we're going to add uh, our green beans. So let's add, we're going to start with six cans and see how that goes. Sous chef John Paul is adding the green beans. Well, Jack's sous chef Jack is actually their chefs. I'm not having any part of this. So we're going to uh, pour in our six cans of green beans. And we'll just let you see how that goes. All right, so once you've got it heated, we're going to put it in our baking dishes shovel it in there until they're well hopefully it'll all fit we'll just see what happens and we wound up using did i say 11 cans of green beans a whole loaf of Velveeta, and how many cans of soup huh Nine. soup six. Oh, sorry. seven six. You know, five to seven cans of soup, maybe? I'm not sure. So, we'll let you see what that looks like when we're there. Okay, from your reserve loaf of Velveeta that you keep, you do keep a reserve loaf of Velveeta, don't you? Okay. So, from your reserve loaf of Velveeta, uh, cut slices and put them on top so that they'll be nice and melty and extra cheesy. <clears throat> like so. And then sprinkle with, um, what are those called? Fried onions. Okay, here's our family's recipe to make our canned sweet potatoes. So we're going to today use three of those big cans of sweet potatoes or yams. And we're going to reserve the juice of one of them and, and put it into this uh, pan here, hot. And we're going to start heating that up on the stove. Alright, so start simmering your sweet potato juices, um, simmering it in, a, uh, in your saucepan, and add to that a half a cup of brown sugar, tightly packed, and then six tablespoons of butter. That's three quarters of a stick. Now, what we're going to do is let all that melt and mix together. 
Meanwhile, once your um, your juice with the sugar and the butter is all dissolved and mixed together and heated up thoroughly, bring it over to your pan of uh, sweet potatoes and drizzle it on there. And let's just see how much it'll hold. We don't want to cover them, but I have a feeling we really only did need the juice of one of the cans. But yeah, I can see that would have been good. But we did way too much. So I wasted some butter probably on that one. So it would be good though if we had another few cans of sweet potatoes. We could double our recipe. But that's the way it goes. Alright, so we're going to cover that and uh, put it in the fridge until later. To make Mommy Jennifer's uh, wonderful bread dressing, start by sauteing, as Julia Child would say, sauteing about five or six celery sticks that are chopped up very finely. And about how many onions would you say that is right there? Two really big ones. Two really big onions. Two really big onions that have been uh, chopped up, uh, sauteing those in some bacon grease so, until they get translucent. What you're about to see is uh, Mommy or Jennifer uh, directing us, to, or directing ah. Jack to make her famous bread dressing. Okay, so how do we start, Mama? I like to start with the cubed, unseasoned bread crumbs. The herb, the herb, the herb is usually uh, crumbs. So I'd like to start with the cubed. So let's put some cubed in there. Do we only have? Uh oh, so we've got four bags but of I mean, cubed. Do we only have one bag and of herb? No, we've got oh, some more. Uh, so that one over there is herb. Okay. This one's in so let's get um, another bag. And this is a big um, Tupperware vessel ball. Um, we could probably, we could probably fit another, um, bag. Okay. Then you're going to need to, uh, beat the eggs. How many? Three? We got three. Um, there. sure, we can do three. Alright, so I'll go beat the eggs. Bad so eggs. we'll try uh, an egg per, per bag, bag of, of cubed. There's our three beaten eggs. Oh. Okay, so mix that up. Okay, and then you want to add the rest of the celery so that's about five sticks of celery stalks all chopped up nice and fine and you want to add but let's see how it looks when you get it in there. So, probably another two or three onions. Three, really? Yeah, you don't think? Okay, let's... let's Maybe two. Ooh, that stinks. Go ahead and stir that up. Oh! Strong onions. Sinuses are clear. Um, 
we still have some we still have some um, sauteed onions that are going to go in there so because um, I just like to have some onions that are um, a little less cooked okay. so that you get a little bit of oniony crunch in the stuffing a little but not a ton so then um, hmm, we probably need to get the sauteed onions and celery in here with okay. all of the bacon grease that they were sauteed in and um, butter because they were sauteed in bacon grease and butter so we want to get all that in here and mix all that up and see how much of the herbed crumbs that we need to add in here to kind of keep it um, not too moist but then we also are going to wind up adding some uh, this stuff chicken broth broth yeah some broth and um and do we have some turkey i've got the turkey juice. wing i've got a turkey wing a turkey butt boiling over there with some onion and celery we also have turkey juice because the turkey's cooking right now okay so um we want to get some actual turkey fat drippings in here because that's what's going to make it wonderful beyond anything else all right so um birds so rolling get it all in there even the, the the bacon grease and the butter dump 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 i was supposed to get a little brown there didn't i now you are not going to be able to mix this with your hands until it cools off so maybe he should use that wooden spoon there did you get a we, we want all of that bacony goodness in there well then i can't really get any more out. okay Oh God, that smells good. Okay. Um, okay. So he's gonna mix that up good. Yeah. So mix that's it up the middle. how much? About two onions and four or five st stalks of celery that have been sautéed in bacon grease and onion. Oh, that good. So, so mommy says to put in some of the drippings from her turkey. So that you can get the turkey goodness. Ooh, look at that. Dark oh that, is. that looks good. Now that should shrink this down enough that we could get some of the crumbed, the seasoned crumbed in. And I like to have more unflavored. That's all. Did you ever say that that was unflavored, unseasoned? I don't know. Okay. That's unflavored. We well, like to have all this unseasoned because, frankly, people put too much seasoning in their food so I like to have a lot more unseasoned and you do it yourself okay now hold on Jack it's gonna be really hot okay so now the bird goes okay. back into the oven to finish all the nasties are in here and is that just, is, That's, yeah. wow, that looks amazing. Wow. Okay, well, when that's all done, we'll use some of that. Maybe we should taste it. Turkey flavor, but I think it was just grease on there. So you think that's just grease in there? No, I don't think so. Mm. Oh. Of course, there was uh, some uh, nice looking turkey fat in there that I think is just rendered okay. down. So. It's got to taste the turkey. Yeah. Mm. 
Okay, well, let's put some of that in the dressing, which will shrink it down and give Jack room so to put stir. That turkey stuff in the stove. That was turkey fat, turkey wing, turkey neck, some an onion, and some celery. That's been just boiling all day, rendering down. To add some flavored liquid to our dressing. So how does she know when she's put enough? Um, put in two. Um, yeah, let's go for three. Um, now, we also want to put, I just don't know what this tastes like. Because we want to put some broth, some real broth in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we decided that we want to try to get as much made as we can. So we added um, another bag of seasoned cubed. So uh, that will add a little bit of the flavor, but we still have mostly unseasoned so that it's not overwhelming. And we're going to put in some of the, of the crumb style just to help kind of give it some body. But I like to have the cube in there as well just a few cubes all right and this is going to dry it out considerably so then we'll just add some more broth um we want to add some you know, salt so some good healthy pinches of salt when you tasted it did it taste salty no. okay so then we're going to add some salt some healthy pinches of kosher salt and that should be good for a bit. And then we'll we'll add some um, when this gets all mixed in, we'll have to add some more broth. So let's um, we are happy with the texture. There's a little bit of uh, cube texture in there that's, you know, so you get a little bit of cube if you like that. Um, mostly it's just stuffing this, so kind of mushy. So that, wow, well, it is more than I realized. Okay. Oh, that's going to be about right. Look yeah, you guys are, are right. Do you, are you ready for the next pan, or do, are you gonna get some more? Did you, you already do half in here? Roughly. Okay, well, let's get half, and then we'll put the other half in here. The sous chef is ready to take it. I'm gonna let Jenna Marie take that photo here. Well, we wanna, do you wanna know about poking holes? Uh, yeah, but we can move this Not one yet. out of the row. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sue. I think your name is Sue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I couldn't help it. I had never thought of that. <laughs> Our chef, Sue. Sorry, I'm not doing anything here. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to mush it, mush it. Are you good? Are you done? Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's some, I'm going to grab some of these onions and whatnot and throw them in there because um, you guys worked hard to get this stuff, so let's get it all out. Look at all that. That is wonderful. Okay. All right. That's better. Okay. So now, tell us about poking holes in the top. Well, we just like, um, by far, the, the best flavor I think that the stuffing is going to get is going to be from the turkey juices. 
that's my personal opinion so um, in order to, to do that since we don't like to stuff the turkey anymore we will poke some holes in the dressing so that when we are able to we can just put shoot some turkey juices in there and it'll get down into every part of the stuffing and it'll make it taste wonderful enough to have um, be able to get that turkey juice kind of infused into every area that is wonderful and then we'll do that well, you know, that's okay, okay. Have to go. all right so this is what mommy was talking about I think by putting some of the turkey Basting juices. It does look amazing, doesn't it? Man, those juices, they've never looked this good before. Is that enough, you think? Because we have some in the other one. Okay, so we're going to make our gravy now, and I have, since we made our turkey, uh, roasted it in this non-stick roasting pan, I don't want to use any metal, metal uh, utensils, so I've got this uh, coated uh, whisk, which I don't like very much, but uh, that's what we're going to use. Now, I'm heating up the fat on the bottom of our uh, roasting pan. And I want to get all this goodness off of here. So we're going to take that chicken broth. Actually, you know what? Let's take this chicken broth. Let's pour this in there. Yeah. And then, now, let's also get some of that chicken broth. Put that in here. I want to loosen all the burnt bits, the well done bits of goodness that are all at the bottom of this. Although I should have made a roux, I suppose. I'll try to make a roux out of all this. Because there's a lot of fat in here. But fat is what makes a good gravy. I think what I'll do. I don't know why. Let's uh Let's do it this way. Could you put, Jenna Marie, put in uh, about three tablespoons, two, whatever's left. Is there any of that? Uh, uh, but no, 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 bake, uh, no, 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 butter over there. One, two, three. Sous chef John Paul is laughing, making me very uncomfortable. I think we'll make a roux out of that butter there. So let's heat that up. Turn on that. Are you sure it's just big? Yeah. See all the, the difference in color now? We're getting up all that tasty goodness. So when you feel you could use wine to deglaze this. I'm going to uh, let this reduce down. Um, so I'm going to heat it and let it reduce down. That's 
that's what I'm gonna do. So, okay. All right, so we have transferred our, the grease that we reduced down into this saucepan. Um, we added actually that roux that we made with the butter and three tablespoons of flour. We added that to this and you know, I just feel like we need a little more gravy and I want it to thicken up a little bit. So we made a slurry. We got about half a cup of water, about a cup of water and added a couple of tablespoons of flour. So we're going to add that to this. Go ahead. And then, yeah. Now we're going to cook that up. Let's see here. Let's just... I'm just trying to see if that middle burner, I think Jenna Marie may be right. Ah, it's coming on. Yay. All right. So we're going to cook the, cook the flour so we are better gravy doesn't have a flour taste. I'm going to cook that. Oh, by the way, do you know how to make uh, holy water? Yes, you, you, uh, you. How do you make holy <laughs> You get, uh, uh, I can't remember how it actually goes. It's you make, you get water and then you boil the hell out of it. <laughs> hey, thank you to Father <laughs> Vollmer for that. <laughs> I thought that was a good joke. I remember that. When he said it. And we're just wanting to cook the flour taste out. And then we're going to add a little bit of milk. And then just cook the hell out of it. Though. Come on. Is it going to work or not? Yes. Okay. Alright, so let's add some milk. Let's go. I don't know. We're not going to measure it. We're just going to. Um, that's good. Now, when this starts thickening up, we'll have some gravy. Yummy. Fabulous gravy. Fabulous friends. Fabulous famous friends. Famous, fabulous. And that, friends, is how I make my turkey gravy. I'm going to have a little salt. This sure doesn't feel like kosher salt. Alright. Well, if we had a gravy boat, I think we'd be set. So when this gets thick, I'll uh, bring you back and show you what it looks like. We are so thankful that you have joined us in preparing this Wilkerson Thanksgiving feast. Um, we will be very thankful also if you find it in your heart to uh, like this video and subscribe to our channel. We hope that this all looks good enough to inspire you to get out the Turkey Baster! The Soup Spoon!